MailChimp tutorial, how to use MailChimp for email marketing. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys everything you need to know to get started with email marketing on MailChimp. Now, first and foremost, you might wonder, why should I be using email marketing as my primary tool for marketing? Well, email marketing is very much integrated into our current system of digital marketing because email marketing is used as a basic pillar to grow your business. You have to send out registration, newsletters, tracking info, all of that is done via email marketing and I definitely do think it's something that is non-negotiable at this point for any business to use. Now, secondly, there are different types of email marketing plans that are being offered on MailChimp. So if you take a look at MailChimp, you will see that it has four basic plans. However, the prices that are based for these plans are based on 500 contacts. So the larger your contact list is, the more you're going to pay. So if you have over 5,000 contacts, your essentials plan is going to cost you $37. If you have 15,000, it's going to cost you $90. So obviously, as your business grows, as your contact list grows, you're going to have to upgrade your plan on MailChimp and have to upgrade to a more valuable plan. Now, with their different plans, they have different offerings. Their best plan definitely is their standard plan, which offers AI-generated features as well as multivariate testing, which is called A-B testing in general terms which is something that I have personally used and find to be pretty effective. Now, moving on, to get started, you can go on ahead and use the free plan as well. And as you guys can see on the free plan, you get access to only one seat and one audience, and you can only add 500 contacts. So if you want to add more than 500 contacts, you can't get started with the free version. However, to set up MailChimp, you can easily use the free version for the first 100 or 200 contacts, just so you can get started and get a grip on email marketing, and then you can upgrade your plan as you need. Now, to get started with MailChimp, simply click on sign up on the top right and then choose your personal plan. So whichever plan you prefer, we're going to get started with the free one. And then you're going to input your business email and a username. And then after that, you are going to click on the password. Now, once you have done that, so we're going to just log in over here. You are going to have a couple of onboarding questions. You know, this might include some basic information about what is your main goal for your account. So we're just going to input that over here like this. And once we have completed our sign up, we are going to verify our account like this. Now, once you have gone on ahead and input your email address, you're going to have to verify this in your mailbox. So you will receive an email verifying your MailChimp account. So you're just going to click on activate account over here. And once you click on activate account, your MailChimp account will be created. And from here, you're going to input some basic info like your name and then your business name. So let's say our business is called Emmeline. And then after that, we're just going to click on next over here. After that, you're just going to input your address and then click on next. And then after that, you also have your top goals with MailChimp. Now, these are just a couple of onboarding questions that you can easily skip. I personally just skip them because MailChimp does not actually give you any personalized features uh, depending on your website or these onboarding questions, your basic setup is going to look the same. So I'm going to continue with the free version and now MailChimp is setting up our dashboard so we can get started with email marketing using MailChimp. Now, not only are we going to learn how to get started with email marketing, but there are multiple different facets of email marketing. Now, first and foremost, for email marketing, you need to have a contact list. So your contact list is going to be the people that you are sending your emails to. And then after that, you have a segmentation and tagging option. And we're going to jump right in and go into the basics of email marketing first. So on the left, you have your campaign section, and then you have a automation section. Now, campaigns and automations can pretty much be summarized in one section instead of two, but MailChimp has separated them. And in your campaign section, you can get started with building something like an email, and then you can build an automation based on that email. So if I build an email, that might be my March favorites, so the favorite products that are recommended by our website. And I can just build an automation that whenever someone signs up or the people that have signed up for our newsletter receive this email, 
for this particular month. So you can really just build automations and campaigns. Campaigns can be scheduled. However, automations usually do need to have a initial trigger. So campaigns can be something that can be placed as a default that are going to be sent to everyone. Now, moving on to our next and most important section, that is your audience. So MailChimp offers you a wide variety of features when it comes to segmentation. Now, if you go into audience, you can click on all contacts on the left. Once you click on all contacts on the left, you can go on ahead and click on add contacts and then add a subscriber. Once you add a subscriber, you can input their email address. I'll just input one of my own email addresses. And once I've done that, I can scroll to the bottom and then I will add this person has already given me permission to email them. This is a very important section to check off because if someone has not given you permission to email, then you're going to land in a lot of trouble because if you don't have permission to send someone emails and you are sending them emails and you're using MailChimp to do that, that is going to flag your account. So make sure that you're only adding people that have subscribed to your mailing list. Now, this is just a simple way to add contacts one by one. However, if you're someone that has already created a contact list and already has all the contacts that they want to import, you can simply go on ahead and go into all contacts and then click on add contacts. Once you do that, you can click on import contact and import them from another service or upload a file or just copy and paste your contacts in. Now, after you have created a couple of contacts, you have two features that you need to make use of, and that is tags and then segmentation. So a lot of people use these terms of tags and segments interchangeably. However, they are very different. So tags and segmentations are terms that you use in marketing, and segmentation is based upon a certain characteristic or a certain behavior that a customer is exhibiting. For example, a segmentation might be customers that have spent 5000 within the past 30 days. So that is a customer segment. The customers present within the particular bracket will change over time. However, if you go into tags, tags basically means that you can organize the audience into one specific specifier. So if you go into tags and click on create tags, you guys can see you even have some tag examples such as influencers, donors. So if you see that you have uh, a couple of orders that are coming from influencers, you can create a tag and then build a certain tag called influencers. And then whenever you're sending email marketing um, mails, you can actually see that, okay, maybe you don't want to send out a newsletter to the influencers, or you don't want to send out a newsletter to your donors. And that can be a great way to make sure that your audience is categorized based upon a specific feature that they possess on themselves instead of a segmentation behavior that they are exhibiting. So how can you create these tags and segments? Well, just go into tags and click on create tag. For us, let's say this is going to be Patreon subs. So these people are subscribed to our Patreon. And then after that, I'm going to just click on create and then I can go on ahead and add people in this particular categorization. Plus, if you have, you know, contacts that you want to add in one tag, you can click on bulk tag contacts on the top right. And then you can start building a tag and multiple different contacts can be added over there. Now, secondly, you have to go into segments on the left. And once you go into segments, you can click on create segment and base a segment upon a certain feature that your audience is exhibiting. So this might include, let's say, if I go and scroll down and I want to add email subscription status is subscribed, or let's say another more plausible one is email engagement is often. So I want to build a segment for my active customers or super active customers like this. And what this will do is that this will, you know, further give me an idea that maybe I should incentivize these customers that are often engaging with my mails to purchase my products by offering them maybe another discount or maybe provide them with a certain incentive. So you guys can see now I have my super active customer segment and then I can see if there are any customers present within that segment. Now after that you have surveys, subscriber preferences, and then inboxes. So 
surveys are and subscriber preferences are not something that you need as a beginner. I honestly don't even use subscriber preferences in my own personal business because it's just not something that is going to be super effective in improving your email marketing campaigns in any particular way. Now, surveys are good to get a feedback from your audience, but for someone that is starting out, you don't need to start with surveys. Surveys are more so reserved for established businesses where they have their business ongoing for quite a while. Now, on the left, you will see after your audience options, you have the option for inside your audience options, you have the option for sign up forms. Now, sign up forms are a great way to get more people to look at your to look or sign up at your email marketing list. So this is primarily the basic way that most to all people are getting their subscribers from. So if you want to add a sign up form, so if you want to get more emails, if you want to collect more emails for your business, you have to create a sign up form. Now there are different types of sign up forms that are available, such as a basic form builder where you can build your own custom form, a pop-up form, a embedded form, or a contact form. So you can choose the type of form that is going to be most suitable for your business. Now for most to all small businesses that are running their own website, a pop-up form is the preferred way to build a audience and get more leads. So I like to create a pop-up form for that and it's very easy to create one. To do that, simply click on create pop-up form. And then once you click on create pop-up form, you will see connect your website to publish your pop-up form. You're going to click on connect your website and I accept the additional terms. And then after that, I can open up my Shopify store or whatever e-commerce platform you're using. You might even be using MailChimp in itself. And then you can select the website URL that you are using. So let's say for us, it's going to be this particular store over here. So I'll just open up this online store and copy our URL and then I'll insert that over here and then click on get started. Now, once you do that, you have to insert this code into your Shopify store or into whatever type of website you're running. To do that, just go into online store and then you will have to edit the code a little, but it's really easy. So just go into the current theme, click on edit code, and you're meant to add this to the head. So you're going to go into the folders and go into assets, go into base CSS over here and select the code and then press command F and then search for forward slash head, and then click on next. Now, if it's not in your base CSS, it should be present in your theme.liquid. So go into theme.liquid, and then just click on command F, forward slash head, and yeah, so it's over here, and right over the head section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste in that code over here, and I have copied it to my clipboard, or just copy it like this and then i will go ahead and then scroll and then in our theme.liquid i might want to reset this code first i will go into edit code and then go into theme.liquid search for command f and then the head like this and then in our head section what we're going to do is we are going to add a few spaces and then paste our code here and then after that, you're just going to make sure that the code has been added correctly. So just research for your head option and then paste it below that section as well and then click on save. Once you've clicked on save, you should be able to check your connection and then your site has been connected. Now I can turn this on. So this pop-up form will be displayed on my Shopify store. Now I have different types of ways that I can build this. So I can click on the email sign up and then I can click on style on the left and I can choose the font, headings, paragraphs, labels, background colors. So I want to convert the headings into a white color and then the paragraphs and labels all in white and then I want the background to be black. And then this button is going to be required and then within the button, I can customize this a little. So I want this to be the image to be over here. And then I can replace the image with my own business image because obviously you want this to be representative of your business. So I will use this image from here. 
And after that, we have the subscription, then we have these settings on the left where we have the option to not show this again after some time. So if someone declines to subscribe, you can choose to not show them this pop-up if they don't want to. But I like to just set this up for one day because I do like to give people multiple different opportunities to sign up. Now, once you've done that, you will see your display options on the left and you have to different options if when you want to display your pop-up so you can choose to display it immediately or after five seconds 20 seconds when people scroll to the middle of the page or when people scroll to the end of the page so i want to display this immediately after people have opened up their page some people like to display it after someone has scrolled to the middle that is also a good strategy because that gives customers an idea of what your business is like and whether or not they want exclusive offers or, you know, your sign-up form. So it's totally up to personal preferences. So I'm going to set it for immediately. And then you have your form settings as well as your, as well as your success settings as well. Now, once you have done that, what you're going to do is click on save and publish and click on save and publish. And now if I go into my Shopify store, our form should be integrated so you guys can see now our form is here and if I close it up it opens up my Shopify store and it is really that simple and easy to build your pop-up form with MailChimp so this allows you to collect more emails now we have collected emails we've learned how to tag and segment our customers but how can we actually build our campaigns and build our amazing emails well don't worry we're going to learn that now now, one thing to note is that you can directly go into create and create any email template that you want. So you can build any template and then later on go into automations and use that template in an automation. So that is why I like to always click on create and then just get started with designing my email. And then later on, if I want, I can use it in an automation as well. Now you will see on the left, you have your campaign name. So you can click on edit name and let's say this is going to be our welcome email and I'll click on save and then you can choose who this will be sent to. So all subscribed contacts in our audience. And then after that, we have the from Then we have the subject. So what's this going to be the subject line of our email? So welcome to Emmeline. Thanks for subscribing like this. And then after that, I want to add our content. So content is obviously the most essential part of any of your email marketing campaigns, because if you don't know how to design an email, what's really the point of using email marketing? So you can click on design email over here. And once you click on design email, you will see a couple of different templates available to you. Now, in these templates, you can enable free templates only, and there are only seven free templates. And then if you look at some of their more premium templates, they are pretty amazing. And I definitely would suggest that eventually you would have to upgrade and you will have access to all of these templates in the premium version of MailChimp. So do definitely make full use out of these because they are some really nice templates. Now, we're going to be customizing our own and we're going to click on apply on the minimal one and I will show you guys how to customize this minimal email template. So first off, remove the top block and then I want a black background for all of my sections. So I will click on the section and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a black background everywhere. So I'll select the text over here and convert that into white and then for our background, I will convert that into a black color. Now, this is just personal preferences. It's really something that I want to do for my email, for my business, because it fits with the theme of my store. However, it is going to be totally different if you are someone that has a different appearance in mind for their store. So that is just personal preferences. It's really something that you can choose on your own. You know, I have this preference. You might want to do something else. So just go on ahead and pick what you personally like. Now, I personally like this style, so that's why I'm doing it. And I'm going to convert the colors. So the button is white now instead of black. And then below that, we have the footer. So in the footer, you have things such as your address. And then you also have your info, which is going to be the list description, the list of the company, as well as the current year that you have. 
Now, once you do that, you can get started with actually designing your email. So first off, we have this logo and I'll click on set logo and upload my logo image over here. And once you do that, you can also customize the alignment as well as link it directly to your store. So if someone clicks on your logo, they would be led to your store. So I will copy that and paste that over here. And once I've done that, I can get started with editing the content. So first off, I will add welcome to our newsletter. And then I want to go on ahead and add more content. Emelyn Designs brings you the best content or the best luxury style out there like this. And now below that, I have a image. So I can click on add and then upload my own image. So I want to use maybe this one or you can use whichever image you want. I'm just going to remove it because this is just a sample email. And then below that you have your button. So in our button, I will double click on the text and then add a shop now. And then I will link my button to my Shopify store as well. So I'll just copy the link of my Shopify store. And on the left panel, I will paste in that link. Now for more stylized elements, you can add dividers. You can also add different types of headers as well as spacers, images, videos, creative assistance, logos, social icons, surveys, and liquid code as well. If you want, let's say I want to insert my own video, I can click on browse images or I can add, you know, my own video. For example, if we go into YouTube, we can insert a video from YouTube as well. So let's say I want to insert this video from here and I'll just click on copy and then paste that over here. And then this will insert the YouTube video over here. And this can help in making your email look more interesting and more dynamic. Now, once we have completed the design of our email, we can click on preview on the top right and then we will see what it's going to look like. Then we can see the mobile version as well as what it's going to look like in our inboxes. Now, once we've done that, we can click on save and exit and we can click on send test email. And I want to send a test email to myself like this and click on send email. And now we can actually see what it's going to look like. So I am going to go into my Gmail account and you guys can see that we have our mail is being sent. So we're just going to wait for it to be sent. But once your email has been sent, you can see it in your inbox. So as you guys can see that this is how you can get started with building your own email marketing campaign. However, this is just an email. To convert this into a campaign, you can go into campaigns and obviously you can just set a due date and a segment to target and it will automatically send it to that segment. However, if you want to use this email and send it every time someone signs up to your email subscriber list, you have to convert that into an automation. So to take this email and convert it into an automation, you have to go into automations on the left and then you will see all journeys and you will see any automations you have created. And you have two different ways you can build this. You can build from scratch or click on choose pre-built journey. Now there are some amazing pre-built journeys available and you can click on welcome new contact over here and once you do that you can click on use this journey and then click on continue. Once you do that you will be led to your basic automation center and you can see that the central plan includes four points and a standard plan includes 100 journey points. You can't create journeys directly in your free account, but obviously if you are going to be using MailChimp, you would have to upgrade to a more premium plan. Now, moving on, if we take a look at our specific automation, you will see the trigger is added up as when a contact signs up to Emelyn, then they create an email and a welcome email is sent. From here, you can go on ahead and click on select template and select the email template or the email that you just designed. They can click on recently used designed or save templates. You can usually find them or in the draft email. So this is the email that we just created and I can click on apply. And now whenever someone signs up or whenever a new person is entered or subscribed to the Emelyn marketing or to the Emelyn subscriber list, they will automatically receive this. And then I can upgrade and continue and get started with my actual journey. Now, these are just some of the basic features of MailChimp that are related to marketing, pop-up forms, and emails. However, if you're someone that is looking for 
an even better experience on MailChimp, you can go on ahead and start building landing pages as well. So with landing pages on MailChimp, you also have reporting functions and you have analytics separately for emails, which allows you to see the performance of your emails. So you will see a revenue average customer and I have linked my Shopify store so it's taking the metrics from my Shopify store so the number of orders the order rate that we have the average order revenue and the overall revenue below that this will show you your email marketing campaigns that you have sent then the content suggestions they have as well as the unsubscribe rate the open rate of your emails the recipients that you had and the click-through rate Below that, you have your conversions, which allows you to see opened emails, clicked emails, as well as deliveries. And then you have your performance over time for your email campaigns. Now, these are just for emails. If you want detailed reports, you can go into the left panel and get a report for a certain campaign as well. Plus, you can build your own custom reports to gain a deeper insight into your marketing campaigns. However, if you're someone that needs a website you can go into the website section and go on ahead and start creating your website or landing page however one thing to note is that i only recommend using mailchimp for landing pages anything other than landing pages is not something that i would suggest you create with mailchimp i have a couple of different reasons for that first off the selling features are not that powerful you might as well pay for shopify separately to use those features Secondly, I don't think that MailChimp allows you to customize your website in many ways like you usually can on any other drag and drop editor like Wix or any other website builder. So for that purpose, I like to use MailChimp because you already have it subscribed, so you might as well create a landing page with it. But having it as a primary source of your website, so the primary website host usually should not be set for mailchimp now mailchimp also allows you to integrate other applications into it this includes sure shopify store like i have integrated shopify we have x formerly twitter woocommerce squarespace we also have zapier wordpress gravity forms pipedrive and many other applications are available to be integrated into mailchimp so it can make it a whole lot more easier for you to run your email marketing campaigns Plus, if you're using any other WordPress pop-up form builder, you can also integrate that over here and get your data synced up instead of having to constantly sync up data manually with CSV files. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and you are now able to get started with MailChimp. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And keep in mind that MailChimp currently has a discount offer running where you can save 50% on annual billing. So if you go on ahead and choose annual billing, you will have a discount for 50%. So make sure to check that out as well. And if there's anything else that you would like to learn, make sure to leave that in the comment box down below. I would love to know what you guys have to say.